guys, episode 3 today, I have a notepad, yes, I have to cover a few points in this video, I'll try to make it as uh, concise as possible, as compact as possible, but I have some pretty interesting things to share with you. Um, so before that, I welcome you all with my love and respects and the blessings of my Guru, His Divine Holiness, Bhagwan Shinitanda Paramashivam. So today's video is again uh, response 3. Who would have thought I was not even thinking of making response 1. Now I'm at response 3. Um, in this video, I want to talk about a few things. Uh, I want to talk about, uh, here I have responsibility. Why do people leave and how patterns make you, you know, decide to disconnect from Guru? Uh, this idea of cult and uh, the principle of the concept of being cheated or the cognition of being cheated by things around us. So, uh, first things first, I was just reading some comments and um, see one thing that the people who have intentions to destroy, uh, like I said in the first video, it's very easy on social media to say whatever you want. And there's one problem with that is that if you decide to learn about something, you have to take responsibility end to end. You have to do research because information can be thrown at you in whatever way it is uh, desired by the person who's sending the information across. And if you don't do your homework, if you don't take responsibility to have a bigger picture of the whole thing, um, you will come to conclusions quickly from wrong understandings and then you'll be stuck in your own conclusions and your own, I guess, judgments um, about the whole thing. So here I was saying some people are making comments, you know, Swamji has been proven that he cannot have any physical relationship. But then in, in comments, people will just say, oh, the test has proven he can. So if you just read it like that, and if you don't get the facts properly, then you will just read the person saying that. And you're just like, oh, the test says he can. You know, it's like you take point one, two, three, four, five. Reality is no, 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 no. But then they will just present it as yes, 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 yes. So if you just quickly read that, and then that's, pretty much or you don't go too further too much further in the whole research then you will be stuck with that and you'll just be you know agreeing with whatever uh, conclusion they're bringing forward so for that if you're really interested to know more about you know the persecution and everything that Swamiji um, Hinduism and our Sampradaya the lineage and the monastic order has been going through you can check out the website nityanandatruth.org I'm putting a link um, here so check it out and this is uh, this is a lot of information about what has happened, the context and everything. So if you're interested, then you should check this out and you should not just uh, quickly come to conclusions after reading posts of some people who are just very... See, people know that most people are not fully interested in this. They have other things to do, but at the same time, they're curious. So when you come from a space of curiosity, you just check, you just check few things left and right. Um, and then they will know that most people won't do the Torah research. They won't go through everything and, and, and get it right. So they're abusing that gray area, uh, this lack of um, authenticity and integrity in the, in, the, in, the, in the way people, you know, search for information. Um, I am very simple. If you actually want to know something, you have to do research and you have to experience. Unless you have experience, you can't say anything. Um, so that is why, you know, many people have a lot of very strong convictions, but what have they gone through? What have they done? Nothing. It is just a conclusion made out of their own understanding without being involved in any way and just by most of the time witnessing what is happening outside of them. So like that, you should avoid to be in that space. Anything you want to do in life, if you actually want to do it, you go get your own experience and form your own understanding. If you're not willing to go through the experience, then be clear you're not fully interested in making it happen. And with that clarity, decide what you want to do and then go towards that. But don't stay in that gray area of lack of um, not taking responsibility end to end for the decisions and everything you want to do in your life. If you want to experience Swamiji, then come experience Swamiji. Then you come to your own conclusions after that. But coming to your own conclusions, listening to what other people say is definitely not the right way to have a solid experience and to have a greater possibility of seeing the reality as it is for yourself. So we have to experience ourselves. So that's one thing I wanted to sh share. Second thing was about patterns. Why do people leave? Um, why do people leave? We have cognitions from which we operate. Our, co our cognitions decide 
the way we decide to perceive things. So we do not see the reality as it is. That is why enlightenment is required because only when you are in that space of enlightenment, you can see the reality as it is. If you decide to see injustice, if you believe life is unjust, if you have this very strong life cognition, life is injustice, you will perceive injustices. That's how it is. Life is subjective to what you want to see. You are the creator of the reality that you experience. And Maya, delusion means you see what is not there and you don't see what is there. See what is not there means you create your own perceptions about what is there. And you don't see the reality as it is. That is delusion. That is Maya. And that is what you have to uh, remove from your life in order to come back to enlightenment. That's the purpose of spiritual growth. Uh, I, not growth, but the purpose of living spiritual truths is to cross and discard the maya, the illusion in which we are each individual caught because of the cognitions we have and the decisions we make towards how we want to see the things in front of us. And it can go very deep. It can even go to the point of experiencing pain physically. A child who falls on the floor does not experience pain. A, young, a very young child. An adult who falls on the floor experiences pain. So to that depth and even further it goes, how, how you perceive things around you and how from these perceptions you create your own experiences. So that's one thing um, I wanted to share. So what happens is when you have a life cognition and you engage with life, you will, ha you will operate from that life cognition. The purpose of enlightenment is for you to or this purpose of following Guru or Master or Swamiji or living the powerful cognitions is to identify the cognitions from which you operate and keep the ones which are making you powerful and discarding and changing the ones which are making you powerless so that you can come back to a space of all powerfulness and ultimately experience that you are super consciousness, you are everything. In some, uh, some of the comments, some people say, you know, this is conditioning, that is conditioning and cult and all these things. Um, See, there is no such thing as conditioning. Everything that is brought in front of you, you say yes or you say no. Whether it is out loud or silently, you agree or disagree. Your yes is always there in everything that is happening in your life. So that is why you have to regain awareness of why you said yes to what and then you can change it. So there's no such thing as something is imposed on you and you're being fooled and I'm being cheated and, and all this thing is just complete delusion. It is everything is, everybody is responsible for the yes that they give out loud or silently and how these answers are impacting the reality around you, around me, around us. And then from there, you just start to look into your inner space and change the cognitions and come back to a space of powerfulness. Even this idea of cult is also, it's, it's, it, it doesn't mean anything. If you look at the bigger picture, again, you know, it's a kind of word which triggers like emotions, you know, well, feeling cheated or abused or, you know, it's, it's very emotionally, there's a lot of stuff related to it because people have generated a lot of drama about the whole thing. But if you see at the bigger picture, it's nothing but deciding to stand for an ideology. Everything in life is nothing but you decide how, what you want to stand for and what you're, how you're going to radiate that truth. Whether it is a spiritual truth, whether it is the, 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 the belief that money, time is money, whether it is the belief that money is power, whether, the, the, whether it is the understanding that the most important thing in life is relationship, or the most important thing in life is a stable family, or the most important thing in life is Paramashiva, or the most important thing in life is the Guru-Disciple relationship. It's only decision to stand for something. So again, this whole, it's a big delusion. This whole thing, it's a cult and you go like this and you go like that. And then you go through this all emotional breakdown. But at the end of the day, you're in complete, you're in your own perception. You don't see the reality as it is and you don't realize that it's the same thing. Whether you decide to wear Calvin Klein or whether you decide to wear this traditional dress, you stand for something. Each decision you make is a, is a, is a, is a, is a, is a stand <laughs> towards standing for something. Meaning if you support this lifestyle of having tight pants, then you wear tight pants. And that is what you stand for. You stand for, you know, the look, the energy, uh, the thought current, which is associated to tight pants. If you're wearing a kavi, then you're standing for the whole thing that the sacred robes represent. And like that, it goes on and on. But it's just standing for something. There's no such thing. Somebody will say, oh, you are in this group, you're in a cult, you're all that, you're not in a cult. This whole society is the same thing. It's the same thing. So 
you ha we have to see the bigger picture again. It's very important to see the bigger picture, to realize what is the fundamental cognition from which we operate, to take responsibility for that and free yourself from the whole Maya, from the whole delusion. And that brings to the third point, uh, which is also associated to that, is this idea of um, being cheated, feeling cheated. Okay, that is my experience and that is what I've seen. Um, humanity is, right now, we're kind of messed up because we are living without any principles. We don't have principles. We don't teach principles. We don't stand for principles. We just want to do whatever we want, whenever we want. And we created a kind of external environment where, you know, it's all about chemical reactions, hormones, and just feelings. And I just want to do it because I want to do it. Or, you know, I just feel like this is what I have to do. And it's, it's very like, there's no, there's no fundamental principle, which is holding the whole thing together. That's why it's a complete mess. And everybody's doing whatever they want, whenever they want. And it creates this chaos, which we are trying to fix by, you know, putting rules and systems and strategies. And it's, it's all, it's a whole big mess. Uh, ultimately, we do not live the cosmic principles. So the interaction between the identity we have created and ourself is already feeling cheated because we are not living. We are cheating ourselves by not living the principles, by not knowing them and by not living them. So this fundamental idea of cheating happens at the very core of our existence as an identity, as an individual and the identity we create for ourselves. Now, then we project that feeling cheated on society. Everybody's cheated. We're all cheated. You know, they will say this food is organic, but most of the organic food is not as organic as you think it is. And the food which is, you know, not saying organic, it is not as healthy as you think it is. Everything is cheated. Companies having their own, everybody has their own vested interests and they're working towards making their own vested interests happen. And unfortunately, we are living at a time where the fear and greed is at its peak and everybody does whatever they want and they're willing to go through whatever extent uh, to put food, to put poison in your food so that you go through the medical system and the medical system makes you weak so that you go towards food and then the whole consumerism system goes on and then this whole wheel runs, kind of, at the detriment of uh, us, human beings and beings in general um, just because we don't know how to exist otherwise we don't have the knowledge to know how to handle our inner space we don't know how to create an identity consciously and we don't know how to create our reality consciously because of that we live in this whole rut and the whole thing goes on and goes on and goes on and it's not leading anywhere that is why the revival of this tradition Sanatana Hindu Dharma is of utmost important because the knowledge is there there is no civilization which has reached the level of knowledge available in Sanatana Hindu Dharma that ever happened on planet earth the amount of knowledge it's a knowledge based civilization uh, we just have to know that this civilization was born at a time and in a place where they had to almost never worry about their survival. They were surrounded by waters and mountains, so they never feared invasions or everything. So the beings who were born in the Hindu Valley civilization, the only thing they sent their energy towards was mainly to experience the ultimate, the truth, the divine, the Paramashiva, that ultimate superconsciousness. So everything they have developed, all the sciences of yoga, of puja, of all the different ways of worship, all the techniques of breathing, the yogic techniques and everything, all these lineages of knowledge, they happen from this civilization because they were fortunate not to worry about their survival. If you take a civilization like the Vikings, they had nothing. They had to constantly conquer things left and right in order to just eat and survive. So naturally, they did not spend that kind of energy to create that kind of knowledge. So that is why in terms of knowledge, the Hindu civilization, Sanatana Hindu Dharma, is the highest amount of knowledge available on planet Earth, in the scriptures mostly, and if you're lucky, in a living master who has realized the truth and is radiating the truth. So that's a, that's a response I wanted to give today. So see the bigger picture, don't fall in delusion. And this whole, be careful about this whole feeling of being cheated. End of the day, you are cheating yourself by not living integrity, by not cognizing, seeking deeper understanding and living integrity, authenticity, responsibility, enriching all these basic principles of life from which the cosmos is running. These are called tatuas, means principles from which the universe is running. If you don't align to these, you will not live blissfully. You cannot because you're not aligned to, the, to how this whole manifested existence is operating. So aligning to that is the first step. And then after that, realizing that you're a superconsciousness and that you exist within everything. 
and there's no such thing. We are so attached to the body that everything we see something outside, we automatically feel dual because we don't feel that body is my body. But that is the main dual part that we have to transcend to come back into that space of oneness and realize that I am super consciousness and super consciousness is all pervasive. It is within everything. There's nothing that is not conscious. When you associate yourself to that consciousness, you become Paramashiva, you radiate Paramashiva. When you associate yourself to this body and few understandings you have about life, you are who you know you are. And you're facing whatever problems you face. You know your problems, you're, you're facing them every day. So if you want to transcend these problems, you have to transcend your identity and what you identify yourself to. The only thing that is eternal and everlasting is consciousness. Experiencing enlightenment, experiencing eternal bliss means associating, successfully associating yourself from a cognitive level, not only intellectual level, but up to the, your cells, each of your cells should know that they are consciousness to that level. That is why all these the traditions like the Siddha tradition and all that, they're so powerful because they're able to give you that experience at the core level. Every cell of your body will be reverberating to that powerful cognition that you are Paramashiva, you are super consciousness, Paramashivoham. So, um, so yes, that is my third response for this video. I don't know if, it's there, if there's gonna be a fourth response, but that's my third response. So leave comments below, like, subscribe, um, and uh, yeah, if you have any comments, leave comments below, I'll answer them. And if there's more food for sharing and enriching regarding this whole initial allegations against us, uh, well, you'll see an episode four <laughs> with this Nityanam, guys, Nityanam. You thought it was over, it was not. <laughs> Actually, I wanted to add this little piece of information I felt I was not uh, attending to one of the points properly so I just want to finish on this uh, again why do people leave the Sangha so what happens is we we operate from a certain identity at some point in our life we feel ah, this is not exactly what I want I'm not creating the life I want or I'm experiencing too many conflicts or too much suffering or I don't have inspiration or I'm bored or whatever. We feel that the life is not fulfilling. So we start to seek something higher and that's where you would land um, towards Swamiji because Swamiji is a doorway towards that higher, the highest reality, the space of Kailasha, Paramashiva. So what happens is as you work with the master, as the master works on the disciples, um, he holds them and guides them on the path for each one of us to identify our pain patterns which are associated to the body and the mind that we have created for ourselves and he gives us the powerful cognition and the space for us to discard that once and for all so that we can come back to so that we can recreate a new space inside of us where we can decide to associate ourselves to something of much higher than just body and mind, um, and that would be consciousness, Paramashiva. But sometimes when the disciple is being walked on that path and that disillusion is happening, sometimes the disciple does not want to let go of some ideas of some pain patterns for whatever reason. So when that happens, then at that moment, the disciple no longer feels that walking this path is the right decision and they decide to disconnect. But end of the day, it is the individual's decision to walk the path and to discard the pain patterns in order to associate themselves to something higher. If you walk that path and at some point you get into the space where you have to, with awareness, identify and discard victimhood mentalities, for instance, um, and all the memories and painful experiences and emotions you might have experienced regarding to this in your life, and you have to cleanse these memories from your body, then at that moment you might decide you don't want to for whatever reason. And, and you rather keep these memories in and walk some, another path than walking that path and getting free from these memories. And that is the individual's decision. Is it the best decision to raise yourself and to manifest bliss? No, but it is, an, it is a decision. I mean, you can decide to live like a Rakshasa in Patala or you can decide to live like Paramashiva in Kailasa. Both is your decision. Um, so like that. But what happens is when we don't take responsibility for our decision, if you decide not to discard your pain pattern, okay, 
but then going and blaming and attacking and abusing things outside of you to justify yourself because you don't have the courage to admit that you don't want to drop that pain pattern and you're still strongly attached to that to these memories which are not serving you in any way but for some reason are within your comfort zone now because you've lived with them for so long and stepping out of this comfort zone is not you are you don't have the powerful cognitions to do it uh that is not okay so if you are answerable for that and you not wanting to see the reality as it is and take ownership of your decisions and abusing then definitely the karma karma will come back and by karma i mean it is your decision initially to cherish these things so if you are in the presence of the guru guru will show you the path and help you to get free of this in the less painful way otherwise life will take care the purpose of life itself is to realize paramashivoham so you don't have It's not like you have a choice. The decision you have is what kind of path you want to choose. If you want to choose the normal path, uh, I guess it's a decision. Uh, is it the most strategic one? Uh, I wouldn't say no, but uh, some people, you know, decide that, and I guess that's fine as long as they take responsibility for their decisions and they don't, um, you know, blame things outside of them when things are not happening the way they want at the speed at which they want. Uh, there's a certain form of sadhana, of tapas, of penance, of patience and of integrity and stability that is required in the path in anything. If you want to build anything in your life, you need these things to, you need to cherish this will persistence, this stability, this decision to stand up and not to collapse. Anybody who has achieved anything in life, they have these things to a certain extent. Of course, to realize Paramashiva, the intensity has to be higher because naturally the goal is much higher and much more subtle and you have to attend to so many other things and not just perhaps one dimension of life, but it is the same path. So that is my understanding of what happens when a disciple disconnects. And unfortunately, we always disconnect because I don't know, but it seems that we always disconnect because we don't want to take responsibility. And that is why I felt that, you know, seeking into and cognizing the deeper understandings of being responsible for everything inside of us and outside of us is one of the most powerful cognition to uh, infuse your awareness into. So that's what I wanted to share. So yes, now it's over guys. Part four, I don't know. Let's see. Nidhyanandam.